Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the FinTech Frenzy. Today, we got some SoFi news. Some SoFi news, some SoFi news, and some SoFi news. So it's going to be a good one. I actually don't think I have... I mean, Marquetta's in the news. Um, I might bring them up. They got a cool partnership that I think uh, is worth talking about. And also a couple videos from Jeff Bezos that recently reappeared in my timeline that uh, just really make me appreciate uh you know the the mindset that he had it was incredible and i see a lot of that in the way that he thinks about uh amazon back in the day is a lot of the ways that i think about not only sofi but a lot of other um growth positions in my portfolio um so we'll get through that we'll wrap it up all right hope you guys are doing well welcome ladies and gentlemen i don't even want to bring <laughs> He's a member of the channel. I don't even want to say his name. Um, dude, do you guys see yourself? Everyone in this chat has a terrible, terrible username. <laughs> Except for B-dubs. That's all we have. We got B-dubs. Hi, Tanner from Oprah. Hi, Oprah. I'm going to call you Oprah because I'm not saying the rest of it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, let's just jump into it, okay? SoFi is once again in the news. So um, earnings are coming up talking about april 29th <laughs> i had to think about that for a sec um we're going to be doing the live stream i have put in my predictions i've heard from other uh you know sort of sofi related content creators like tevis and um data-driven investing that they are all working on their predictions and that those will be out before earnings as well so we'll be able to compare and contrast um but i got a comment recently that just bugged me where people were talking about Oh, you know, these, these predictions are wrong. Uh, so why do you keep doing them? Well, no, I, I think a lot of it is right. And some of it is wrong. It's like the, wall street bets on two numbers. Okay. Revenue and EPS. What I'm doing here is trying to break down 30 different metrics that we can look at uh, through SoFi and say, hey, I believe that this, 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 all the way down the line is what's going to happen. It's like the largest parlay that you could possibly uh, do. So no, not all of it is going to be correct. I'm not Nostradamus. I'm just a guy. But I still think that it's a fun thought experiment and it just shows you guys how I'm thinking about the company and, and what we're seeing in the numbers which is not everything. I don't get a clear, transparent look of the background of SoFi. I just get the, you know, forward stuff that they show us, as well as some stuff that we can grab from other websites, like website traffic and these sorts of things, as well as add commentary about, you know, what the total market is doing with student loans or, you know, the ABS deals that we see for them selling personal loans, these sort of things. Um, with that being said, I got an amazing recommendation saying that whenever I was looking at the numbers, I was just comparing Q4 of 2023 to Q1 of 2024. Now, I don't look at SoFi as being a completely cyclical business. It's not, but there could be some sort of cyclicality whenever it comes to spending and these sorts of things. So I wanted to actually bring it back up um, for my Q1 2024 predictions and just show a little bit of the year over year, show the quarters that we've seen previously, get a little bit more insight. Um, yeah, and then we can talk about price predictions as well near the end, but I want to make this more of a conversation. So um, I'd love to hear your guys' predictions as well, and we'll we'll debate it a little bit back and forth. All right. Uh, turtleneck. Uh, Tanner, just wanted to say thanks for everything you do. You're appreciated. Thank you. Um, can't imagine all the time you spend behind the scenes with your research. Uh, it's too much at times, but it's, I actually do like playing around. So, um, yeah. So this is an expanded version of what you guys had seen previously. Okay. Um, so members quarter over quarter, we saw that we saw the Q4 and the Q1, what we didn't end up seeing was the Q3, Q2, and Q1 of 2023. All right. So I wanted to expand that as well as year over year percentages. So you can see that, you know, new members, I still think will hold up that 44% year over year, uh, like it did last quarter as well. But, um, you know, 
maybe not the 11% growth quarter over quarter that we saw back in Q3 of 2023. Potentially, that will happen into the future. I'm not saying that uh, members can't re-accelerate, but how much do you guys put into the commentary for uh, Anthony Noto and uh, team whenever they say, hey, don't expect that we're going to hold up 700,000 new members every quarter, and that what we're actually aiming for is in that four to 500,000 uh, new member ranges? How do you guys weigh that whenever they say that? Do you think that that's just ultimate sandbag, Anything that they could say that might actually potentially put a hamper on it is sandbagging, or do you actually think that they're trying to set expectations in the right direction just in case that they don't have as good of a Q3? Because that's the way that I look at it. I'm kind of prepping, uh, I don't know what you call it, like almost like a loaded question, but I'd love to know. Um, while you guys are typing, products. Okay, so looking at this on a quarter or, or sorry, year over year base. So this is another way uh, that I just added to it, right? Let's expand it a little bit. 40.81%. So 40.81% is the lowest out of all of the numbers, but you also have to put it into perspective. Uh, SoFi continues to add on, right? So to keep up those extremely high rates would be very hard. I actually think there will be a real reacceleration just maybe not in 2024 as they're kind of going through a restructuring. Stephen the Mountains is saying, I think that Noto and Co. are being conservative. Um, I don't think they're sandbagging at all. They're very focused on risk management. So B-dubs, do you think that they are actually going to see a drawback in lending? And how do you see that happening? Do you see, because... I'll probably make a full video talking about this, but one of the things that I am really thinking in my head is when we start to look at SoFi and like even after the convertible notes, they have cleared up so much of their risk-based uh, capital that they're at like 17.3% at the end of Q4. 17.3%. The legal requirement is 10.4%. And yet SoFi themselves said we will be in the 14 percentages by the end of the year again. Okay, so if that's where they plan on hovering, they're going to need to put out a crap ton of originations in order to keep that number at 14%. What do you mean they're going to expand into SMB? They're going to expand into SMB this quarter? Because I doubt that. In fact, I don't think that whenever they originally launch SMB, um, I don't even know if they will launch with the lending side. Or at least I hope that they don't. I think that they should roll out checking and savings and continue to use... uh, It's on their app? Well, why don't you read the app, man? Go, Go in the app and then you see where you can get a, a SMB loan from SoFi directly because it's a marketplace. They'll give you out to a bunch of other companies. Didn't you see that? Man, literally go click on it. Go click on it. It'll tell you all the different companies that they're going to quote you for. It's lead generation currently. Same with life insurance. Yeah, exactly. It's just a marketplace. Yeah, freaking wrench. This freaking wrench over here. Seventeen percent. No, so um, I don't know if you're talking about something else, but I'm not talking about the uh, annual sort of uh, interest rates. I'm talking about the risk-based capital. But yeah, I mean, they they would potentially also be giving out loans at 17% as well, but sort of averaged out in the middle is somewhere around 15. Okay, let's continue on here. So financial services, I'm actually placing, uh, once again, very high year-over-year growth, very good quarter-over-quarter growth on products, and all the way up to 841,000 new products. What everyone really discounts is that Relay is a thing. Relay is going to be one of those products that almost comes as uh, 
you know, just a simple add on to every other product that someone gets. Let's talk about price in a second. I'm going to talk about price. Um, but this was another thing that's very controversial. And even I think it's controversial. Uh, 6 million new Galileo accounts. This one is the hardest one to peg every single time. I could see this being even higher, uh, potentially 7, 8 million like they did last quarter as well. It's very, very hard to predict this number especially. I'm curious what you guys think about the technology platform. This is Galileo accounts of them signing on new cards. Take your wrench away. I don't deserve it. <laughs> you don't get a wrench based on your SoFi knowledge. I appreciate you putting up the fight, though. That was fun. Lots of exclamation marks. Didn't you see that? Is that what that's what he said? Well, I can't believe the SoFi guy didn't see it. Get out of here. I love their current card. So the way that I read this, and tell me if I'm wrong, but that you meant current, the client, and that card that's offered at current, uh, which is actually no longer at Galileo. Where you see this negative 4.4 million is actually current leaving the platform. That was a sad day. It makes the year-over-year -year percentage look amazing, though, if we do get that 6 million. CTI, are you meaning city? You should do Q1 2023 versus Q1 2024. Those are the most relevant benchmarks. Yeah, so that's what this is right here. Maybe I can... Uh, there we go. So yeah, we can look back to see revenue is going to be another one that I think um, will be really hard for me to try to benchmark. I mean, this is where like I am just above where SoFi said that they're guiding for. And yet throughout the entirety of the year, I am being pretty bullish. And yet it still doesn't even come very close to what they did in Q4 of 2023. If a major POC is validated, could see double digit millions in Galileo ads. If not, assume around 5% or sorry, 5% 5 to 7 5 to 7 million or so odds or ads. Uh yeah, I mean it's just I've been paying attention a lot, going around to different companies, going through their user agreements, trying to find any big names. I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any. And I don't know if you guys have been around a lot. I have debuted a lot of different Galileo clients on this channel. I've, I've seen them. I have not seen them in the last three months. That's a fun one. Jared, for funsies, what's your stock price end of day, April 29th, after earnings? See, I do believe that we will see good earnings, okay? Um, I don't think that we're going to see the beneficial ads like it from MBA or anything like this for new member ads. Um, but I do think that we're going to see good earnings. I think that it's going to surprise Wall Street. There's going to be buyers after we see two, uh, two quarters of profitability. I still think there are people that don't believe that we're going to see two quarters of profitability. I think even B-dubs has questioned if that's going to be the case. Um, I could definitely see double, like, like 10 plus percent um, on SoFi's price if we see a good quarter. But it's always hard. I mean, the macro, the macro is the same whether we see good numbers or not. That there's a potential. So, so this is also my concern as well. And I'll be, I was going to do a video on this, but and I probably still will. 
that if SoFi continues to take a very conservative outlook on their earnings, that we could potentially see them slow down on new originations or at least guide for that going forward if they're worried about a rate hike going forward. Now, that's a small percent. That's a small percent chance that of people that are betting on that outcome. But SoFi always takes a very conservative outlook. So they might even have it down to zero rate cuts, end of year, one rate cut, end of year. That's fine if things stay flat. It's just if they believe of any of any belief that rates might increase going forward, they're going to slow their originations. Maybe. That, that would be where the bears would cling on to if they said anything along those lines. What's the cap deal guaranteeing the stock price? And there's no guarantees. <laughs> uh, I think what you're trying to say is that the people, if they get their stock price, I think it's $12 and 29 cents. Um, or yeah, $12 and 29. I'm going to mess up all the numbers. I, I don't honestly remember anymore. I think it was $9 and something for them to be able to, uh, start allowing the capped calls to start working. And then I think it ends at 14 something and that they're able to start closing out their position or sorry, start selling their position in July. If it passes $12 and 28 cents, something around that. It's been a while. Robert's got all the numbers memorized. Jeez. Spot on. Perfect. Um, did Tanner say 10% increase in, in share uh, with a good earnings result? Yeah, I mean, I could definitely see that. We're, we're already really sold off. In fact, you know what's funny? As I was just listening to BG Squared, which is um, Brad Gerstner and Bill Gurley's podcast, and they actually brought up SoFi as an example of a company that since IPOing has seen good results in their stock price, which I, I wouldn't necessarily claim that, but they that's what they said. Um, as well, and, and I think they said over the last six months as well, and also uh, fundamentally doing great. They used him, uh, him and hers as well as uh, SoFi. Those were their two examples. And it was Bill Gurley that actually said that specifically. Joe Biden for president 2024 says, I think you're all wrong. He believes that every student loan is just going to get wiped out and that SoFi is not going to have a business anymore. <laughs> Tanner, how much money would SoFi earn if all the call or uh, Called calls are sold for max price. Nothing. They're going to buy back shares. I'm not putting him on blast for having Joe Biden as president. I'm just saying that's Joe Biden's, that's his mantra right now. Get rid of student loans. Not putting him on blast. Bro, honestly, I really do not take a political uh, opinion whenever it comes to stocks. Like, I mean, I do if there's some sort of regulatory change, but I think that you kind of have to put that stuff to the side. Um, like even the thing with, with what happened with Google, right? A bunch of, I think it was 20 something, 24 people or something, 21 people uh, stormed like the Google CEO office and just sat there um, protesting a uh, what do you call it? Deal that they signed to help the government out in Israel. I don't care, honestly, whether those people were uh, on the side of Israel or Palestine. 
to protest the company that you work for, the fact that you fired them was 100% the right idea, right? I, I think that Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong is, has the message down so perfectly. A, a workplace is not a place to come in and involve politics. And I completely think the same thing with um, stocks. And there gets to a point in a company, especially these large companies, where bloat, okay, company bloat can allow these things to sort of fester. And you can sort of get the company ran by the politics of the employees that work there. That cannot be the way. thousand percent companies should not have tolerance for that yeah and then they, they sacked them so i thought that that was a good play by google and something that i think a couple of months ago they would not have fired those people show them what's under the desk i'm wearing white adidas joggers or i don't know if these are joggers. i don't know what they are uh just like track pants i don't know Uh, what's me? Ticker symbol me? Oh, 23 and me. Oh. Sweet. I mean, hey, you had a good day. <laughs> cool. I wear a lot of Adidas. All day I dream about SoFi. Okay. Um, let's go back to the predictions real quick because I think that this is important. Uh, as well as actually, Tevis is in the chat. I wanted to bring up one of his tweets. This was me. Okay. Uh, EBITDA, I got a little bit of flack about this. The slowing in margin, 22%, you know, quarter over quarter, down 30%, year over year, up to 67%. Curious what you guys thought about this once we start looking into the bottom line here. Um, people started seeing or started getting a little bit against me on these thoughts the thought of corporate revenue being negative continuously net income being only 23 million some people are saying eps of three cents eps of like uh, i don't know much larger numbers than what we even saw last quarter um i'm curious to know your guys's opinions remember that this 23 million dollars is above SoFi's guidance. So SoFi currently is um, guiding for 10 to $20 million in net income. I'm saying even above that. All day I dream about <laughs> New Bank. <laughs> Oh, also, someone said that my annual thing that I'm guiding for 13 cents EPS, I actually, uh, that's basic EPS. So um, essentially the way that I'd look at it before is about 10 million in earnings was about a cent of EPS just because we were so close to a billion, um, billion total shares. And so what's it called? Um, the... 47 or 48 million that we saw last quarter would have been five cent EPS. We only got two. It's diluted, right? Um, so this would actually mean one cent EPS. It would mean that my full year was something like 10 or 11 cents, not 13. And that that might increase as we see more, more details. And also, I'm going to do my uh, product predictions for probably tomorrow at 2 p.m. Once again, I'll probably put out um, all my product 
predictions for next quarter as well, which is honestly where I have the most fun. Phil Kim says, could be four cents, to be honest. So you're saying like close to $100 million in net income. So where are you finding it? Dude, if we get four cents EPS, we're going way above $10. Four cents would be like 80 plus million. Tevis, do it soon, man. I think one and a half to two cents, 35 to 40 million. Sure. Sure. I'm worried about stock based compensation. Um, I hope it continues to decrease. I heard that they've been doing a lot of restructuring, like sitting down old employees and saying, hey, like we need to go over your comp package. We're going to give you cash instead of stock, <laughs> which is probably right. Like you don't want to give away stock-based compensation and then the stock to continue to go down because then you're incentivizing or like you're paying people less than what you said you were going to pay them. It only works if stock goes up. Easily hitting four cent EP. We're talking quarterly, Alberto. Come on now. How could they not? Well, last quarter, like Q4, we did 40, 48 million. How could they how could they not double it? <laughs> what do you mean? People are saying IPO money. What what money? Tell me what you guys think the amount of money that we're bringing in from IPOs that we've been doing for years now. What what money is coming in that you guys think is going to happen that's going to double our net income? I see all these comments on my videos and I hate whenever it's not live because I'm just like, these are ridiculous and I don't want to type out my freaking answer. But last quarter, they didn't do the convertible note that saved them 60 to 90 million in interest. Okay. That saved them 60 to 90 million in, well, 60 to 90, hilarious. Okay. You're talking closer to 60, <laughs> a lot closer to 60 million than you are 90. Um, and that's over an entire year. Okay. Not to mention that the bulk of that, the 40 million, actually falls under the convertible notes or sorry the the preferred shares that are paid out on a six-month basis and that six-month basis is not this quarter so we're not even going to see any amount of that preferred uh shares not like that's not falling on this quarter it's june 30th and december 31st Or four cents would bring me out. It says crazy Tanner. <laughs> it's being, it's bringing me out that people are saying that we're going to get that level of like, sure. I would love to see that. I hope I'm proven wrong, but that's crazy. Yeah. And B dubs, it might also be priced into 2024 guidance. Aaron Pinto, the new board of directors member. I didn't see this. Where? where? Check out my comment. Where? It's four percent. It's four cents easy. Come on now. And then people call me a pumper. 
And then there are, there's those other stock uh, YouTube channels. I forget which one Tevis. Tevis always sends me these videos. People are like, this stock's going at $2 trillion. <laughs> 857. Stock-based compensation uh, might be higher on an absolute number basis. Sequentially, they had headcount changes on an executive level. Don't forget. Okay. Jay Abrams. I literally... I'm getting... I've got 300 plus people. I'm not skipping anyone's comments. I just... I see a ton. And also, I tend to... Uh, see like the member comments more they're they're highlighted for me i'm gonna prioritize those comments um your things like this gray th it just fades into the background whenever i see a comment like this oh sorry jay uh, that's why i didn't answer it because i don't I, I i'm not here to talk about a uh, trading strategy or something like this i'm talking about uh fundamentals and this is so funny too people go oh well he's pumping it's like I'm talking about what I'm doing. <laughs> you see all these videos come out like you need to buy now. It's like, oh, I I just bought <laughs> or this is what I'm thinking. And most of the time I'm middle of the road where people call me in the same video. They say I'm pumping and I'm way too conservative and I'm the bear of SoFi. If I've got both, I feel pretty uh, like I feel like a centrist. Four cent side bet Tanner. I win. You bring Steve back. I'll buy his Pokemon collection. You win. I'll send you a gift certificate for a steakhouse. I don't want a gift certificate. I mean, you could just donate to the channel or something. <laughs> uh, I, I can't. I can't bring Steve back. It's not something that I can control. So it's not like that's a bet that I could not fulfill. Um, four cent EPS side bet. I can. I don't know. I can give you a, a, a course subscription or something uh, if you get it right. If you don't, if you don't already have the course, then you have to buy it. Yeah, you pumping bear. <laughs> ETF, you are late, my friend. It's true. Yeah, I do think that there could be a middle ground between two cents and, or sorry, one and two cents. Um, you know, there there are ways that they could have made a lot of extra money. Um, we'd also have to see what percentage of their CAC and these sort of things like sales and marketing expense goes up. That could be a really big play if, for example, they front loaded a lot of this MBA deal. Um, so we're only going to really reap the benefits in Q2 going forward. But potentially, we don't know this 100%, they could have started paying for that in Q1. Two cents is my personal expectation. If they don't meet that, I'm selling out. <laughs> ah, that's funny, man. <laughs> if, they <don't laughs> if they don't double their guidance, I'm out of here. I know what they're telling me, but if they don't double it, I'm out. Like truly the champion of excuses. <laughs> I forgot about Riley. Yeah, I just spoke with Riley today about coming back on the SoFi Weekly. Yeah, he's doing good. I don't know if he'll be back right away, um, but yeah. Six cents. I'm optimistic. <laughs> yeah. I think that they're going to do more in net income than... You win? Dude, you didn't... The bet didn't even start yet. Thank you, though. And, and the truth is, is that the numbers that we are covering, like, so far, we'll get there. I do believe that they're going to have a beat and raise strategy for four quarters in a row this this year. That is in my expectations. But a beat like a beat could be by 5-10%. A beat doesn't have to be by 100% or sell out. 
And I think that if you're on that much of a rope with a stock, like just no margin of safety at all, they have to double uh, expectations or else I'm selling. I don't, I don't know, man. Sell before it <laughs> earnings. <laughs> uh, what's their EPS guidance? Like half a cent. Half a cent to a penny. I'm saying they'll do a little bit more than a penny. No, they're not going to do half a cent. They're going to do two. And it's possible. Like, I'm not saying that it's not. Like, we definitely saw that last quarter. We saw a, a great boost. But, um, yeah, we saw some pretty exceptional things last quarter. Corporate revenue flipped. Instead of doing negative 20, they did plus nearly $26 uh, million. Are you telling me that no one here, including the other YouTubers you interact with in retail do options? I, I mean, literally, uh, so like every other one. I, um, and I'm not even anti-options. I just want to talk where I feel comfortable and, and morally okay with talking about. And that's common shares and fundamental investing. I'm not trying to predict the stars here. I'm not trying to uh, put expiration dates on companies. Historically, SoFi would have been a terrible company to play options with because the stock had gone down since $14. So yeah, at, at the time, I felt that $14, it was an underrated company whenever I first bought in. And then as interest rates continued to climb, something that, you know, I wouldn't have predicted would have been the fastest rate cycle in history, a lot of people would have gotten burnt. So, yeah, I'd rather like just what goes on my com or what goes on my channel, I'd rather be more comfortable talking about, um, you know, high risk tech co companies because that's where I play in. And that's the only thing that I like doing, but potentially a safer way to make those trades. Tanner talks about other stocks and has one quarter of the chat. It's so true. It's very true. The SoFi audience is, is strong. Yeah, I'm not, like I said, I'm not anti-options. I just don't want to be a participant in um, in trying to train or teach that or something like that. But I'm not anti them at all. Like, do you. But it comes with an expedited amount of risk. And a lot of that, especially like, I, I, I hear from even friends and family where they go, hey, what stocks are you buying? And then I go, I'm buying this company, you know? And then that stock's price target gets hit and I sell and the market changes, something like this. And then the stock comes down and they go, and this company hasn't, hasn't done much. It's like, yeah, but you're not, I'm not in your portfolio. I'm not telling you when I'm like, like the exact time. Oh, you know what? I forgot to say my brother's girlfriend followed me into this trade and I forgot to call her and let her know that I sold. That doesn't happen. Right? So Cover stocks you like, fundamentally. That's where I'm comfortable. <laughs> uh, ba -ba -ba. Tesla is no longer a loved darling stock on Wall Street. In my opinion, it'll turn around. It's the future. Electric vehicles are the future. I don't care about people that are into, you know, gas cars and these sorts of things that say, ah, no, I'd rather drive my gas car. Okay. <laughs> my brother used to say that all the time until they debuted this Cybertruck. And he's like, that's the coolest thing on the road. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> People need to project out uh, like that is what makes good growth investors. People go, oh, you know, AI can't do this. They're not going to replace my job. 
It's like, dude, the it, AI can't do this right now. It will do that next year. <laughs> Elon Musk is a charismatic hustler leading a California cult. I don't know, man. I think that they turned a pretty unique idea of an electric vehicle into one of the most prominent auto companies in the world. Maybe you don't like what he does politically, but I think it's hard to discredit what he's done as a CEO, as a manager, <laughs> as a product engineer, It's, uh, yeah. He sure does make a good product. And I think that, so l let me watch a video with you guys. So this is pretty cool. This is a video, uh, this is a video from Jeff Bezos. You guys know him? It's, uh, the CEO of <laughs> Amazon at the time, um, and this sums up the way that I hope that everyone invests, okay? Because I feel this way about SoFi whenever people go, it's just a bank, right? Or it used to be a fintech when we could have given it a uh, valuation, but now it's a bank, unfortunately. So they did themselves a disservice. And then, you know what? Start replying with this video here, because this is the important part. It's not about being valued as a certain company. It's about being the best company. You're not really a pure internet company uh, anymore either, are you? I mean, you've got millions of square feet now of real estate. You've got huge and growing inventory of items we, that you we, keep in we stock. We do whatever. And you've got thousands and thousands of employees now. Yeah, we have over 3,000 employees and over 4 million square feet of distribution center space. And those are things I'm very, very proud of. Because with that distribution center space and half a dozen distribution centers around the country, it allows us to get product close to customers so that we can ship it to customers in a very timely way, which improves customer service levels. That's what we're about. If there's one thing Amazon.com is about, it's obsessive attention to the customer experience end to end. And that's what those distribution centers are. But you're not are. a pure internet player. It doesn't, I, I, it doesn't matter to me whether we're a pure internet player. What matters to me is do we provide the best customer service. Internet, schminternet, that doesn't matter. Well, but it does matter to your investors to know whether they're investing in a company that No, they is... should be investing in a company that obsesses over customer experience. In the long term, there's never any misalignment between customer interests and shareholder interests. Well, that's the same argument that somebody at Walmart would make as well, wouldn't it? I, I don't see why not. I think they should make that argument. So It's uh, a correct argument. Okay. <laughs> so you'll open as many square feet of physical space as you have to, hire as many employees as you have to. To service customers, absolutely. And we'll do it as rapidly as we can. Either way, whichever side of the argument you believe, you're making what seems to me to there's be only one side which is obsess over customers but it's don't you just absolutely love that like i it's what's best for the actual business there's been no misalignment between customer interest and investor interest forget about this whole idea of placing <laughs> Jeff Bezos pre pre testosterone. He is so freaky in those old those old interviews where he sits like this and he. But you know what? He was a genius, dude. He like an absolute genius. Uh, and and I think that that's really important to think about because forget about this whole pure internet play garbage. Okay, if there's continuous market share taking, they will end up getting that premium. I promise you, it can take a long time, but that is how people should be investing. Super important. That video honestly gets me hyped up. I really do like that video. Jeez. So, hey. If a bunch of other fintechs and these sort of things potentially want to steer away from, uh, you know, bank charters because they could potentially pose, uh, you know, multiple compression on their stocks and so they don't want to touch it. Meanwhile, SoFi can play uh, with closer margins and, and potentially uh, make more money on a per client basis. Go right ahead. More opportunity for SoFi. I love, I love, I love what Anthony Noto is doing. And, and especially you see that even in like customer, customer acquisition costs. 
oh, but your, your customer acquisition cost is so much higher than fintechs. It doesn't matter. We're, we're focused on, on the lifetime value of the customer, okay? We're going to make more back from them versus those fintechs because we're willing to pay more for a better customer and they're willing to take the scraps of the people that are willing to sign up based on just a simple referral. Someone to collect a small fee and never use that product. Jeff Bezos is, and I would bet a ton on it. He is definitely on HGH and testosterone. HGH is human growth hormone, by the way. I bet he's on a little bit of HGH. Oh, dude, he's, dude is jacked. <laughs> but hey, when I'm 50, 60 years old, I got the money, I'm doing it too. Knowing that the, you know, there's no new freaking article that comes out saying that it's disgustingly unhealthy or something. Uh, let's see what else. Bezos getting younger. <laughs> Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, just uh, try to think prudently about your investments. And uh, in my opinion, people should be focused on the future because that's where your stocks are going. Look up to a lot of the greatest growth investors of all time. They'll tell you how important growing total addressable markets are and what percentage of that market share are they growing in. And then potentially uh, other opportunities that once they actually, like like if the worry is market saturation, like Nubank, for example, what other verticals could they get into expand their revenues and also potentially get into other areas that expand their margins? Financial services happens to be one of the industries with the highest uh, margins in the industry. Anywho, thank you all so much for watching. If you guys want more content, uh, more written content, you can check out my Twitter right there, X, at Future Investing. But until next time, guys, bye for now.